Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. Today we're checking out the Dell Alienware AW2725DF, another 1440p 360Hz QD OLED gaming monitor following on from the MSI MPG 271QRX we looked at a few days ago. These new 360Hz offerings are the fastest OLEDs on the market and provide a great range of capabilities for multiplayer gamers as well as single player gamers interested in this monitor's strong HDR performance. The panel used in the AW2725DF is a new 27-inch 1440p 360Hz QD OLED from Samsung Display, offering direct competition to WOLED panels from LG Display that were released last year. This has helped drive innovation in the gaming monitor industry while pushing prices down, especially outside of the US, where this Alienware monitor is very well priced. In the United States, it starts at $900 US. This Alienware monitor has a nice build quality without doing anything especially interesting. Most of the outer surfaces are plastic, though it's a good quality plastic that fits well with its premium price. The rear of the monitor especially I think looks excellent. Nice and simple design with some RGB LED elements and vents without going super hard on gamer styling. The front is dominated by the glossy QD OLED panel of course, with Alienware branding on the black bottom bezel. Unlike the larger 32-inch 4K model, this Alienware unit uses entirely black plastic instead of the two-tone white and black design. I quite like the striking look of the AW3225QF with its large white panels, but the 27-inch model being all black is going to fit in better with a lot of gaming setups. The OLED panel doesn't appear as thin as what you get with the MSI variant, though it's still relatively slim on the Dell model outside of the central area that houses all the components. The stand supports height, tilt, swivel and pivot adjustment, including the ability to rotate the panel into a portrait orientation if you want to. It's a sturdy design that resists desk wobble. The base of the stand is a six-sided design that doesn't take up much desk space, smaller than typical for a display of this size. Like the AW3225QF, the AW2725DF features active cooling. There's a fan inside that spins at a low speed. However, this fan has been virtually inaudible at all times, no fan noise issues here, so I don't expect buyers to find this annoying. I'm only mentioning it here for the silent PC enthusiasts that demand a product without active cooling, and also the competing MSI model does not have a fan at all, for what it's worth. As for ports, we get one DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and several USB ports that act as a simple hub. While there is a USB-C port on this monitor, it only supports 7.5 watts of power delivery and cannot be used as a display input. Also, Dell advertised the HDMI ports as 2.1, but they are actually only using 2.0 level bandwidth, limiting the display to 144Hz over HDMI instead of the full 360Hz. While the HDMI 2.1 specification technically allows this, and Dell are clear the HDMI ports are only 144Hz capable on their website, this is still a bit misleading for buyers, and the fact that HDMI forum allows this type of advertising is stupid. Also worth mentioning is the AW2725DF does not support some of the features that the Alienware 4K 240Hz model does, like eARC or Dolby Vision. This makes the screen less well suited to media playback and more of a gaming specific display. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle on the bottom edge near the Alienware logo and it's a fast, easy to navigate interface for the most part. Dell provides some game specific features like a crosshair, sniper mode, refresh rate display and shadow boosting, as well as a standard range of color controls. The OLED care features are on the limited side though, with only pixel and panel refresh available to the user. Other burn-in prevention features appear to be enabled, they just don't have any user adjustability, so you cannot adjust the strength of the feature or disable things like pixel shifting or logo detection. Text clarity continues to be a big talking point with QD OLED gaming monitors, and we saw significant improvements in this front with the 140 PPI 4K models we've been testing recently. However, this is a 27-inch 1440p panel which features a lower 110 ppi pixel density, meaning text clarity is not as good as you get with the higher spec 4K variants. Instead, what we get is text clarity equivalent to other second generation QD OLEDs, like the 49-inch Samsung Odyssey OLED G9. The subpixel structure is improved here compared to first gen panels, the first wave of 34 inch ultra wides like the AW3423DW as an example, but not to the point where this panel is capable of LCD like text clarity. There is still some pink green fringing at the top and bottom of text, however it's not as noticeable as with those first gen panels. 
Typically, it's reasonable enough for occasional desktop app usage and continues to be a non-issue for content consumption, like gaming. One of the major points of interest for potential buyers, though, is the text clarity compared to W OLED panels, as you may be tossing up between this 360Hz QD OLED model or one of the similar 240Hz W OLEDs. Having used both extensively, this new QD OLED panel provides noticeably better text clarity than those W OLEDs, so if you want the best text experience, there is no doubting the 27-inch 1440p QD OLED panel is better. For panel composition and coding, this is your classic Samsung QD OLED panel experience, which is to say it's glossy with an anti-reflective surface treatment. The composition appears identical to second gen QD OLED panels, such as the 49 inch 5120 by 1440 version, which itself is a small improvement over first gen QD OLED. What this means is the panel has the same issues described in previous QD OLED reviews. In brighter environments where light sources are in front of the display, the panel has a tendency to reflect ambient light, raising blacks to the point where they appear somewhat grey. This impacts one of the key selling points to getting an OLED, which is its deep blacks. They just won't be that rich or deep in brighter conditions, especially relative to glossy W OLED panels. General reflection handling is decent, so mirror-like reflections aren't too bad, though being a glossy panel, there is always going to be some amount of visible defined reflections, which get worse the brighter the conditions are. However, the issues with the coating can be minimized by optimizing the placement of light sources in the room so that lights are behind the display. The darker the environment, such as gaming in a dim or fully dark room, the better this QD OLED panel looks, and in dim conditions, you will typically get a rich, deep OLED black experience. It's really hard to say whether this will be an issue for you as it can be a case-by-case -case basis. Personally, I do find it annoying and one of the larger issues with QD OLED panels, but if you primarily game at night, it's not anywhere near as much of a concern. At the very least, it's something to be aware of. One thing to note though is competing 27-inch W OLEDs use a matte anti-glare coating, not a glossy finish. It's a fairly heavy and effective coating that minimizes mirror reflections and better preserves blacks in brighter environments. However, the trade-off is grain. This matte W OLED coating is less clear than this glossy QD OLED coating. What's also important to be aware of is that OLEDs generally aren't great monitors for desktop usage, productivity apps, and web browsing because they are susceptible to permanent burn-in, and this new 360Hz QD OLED is no exception. Anything with static content like toolbars or icons on screen for a long period of time, like you get with most desktop apps, is at risk of burning in. Conversely, dynamic content like gaming or watching videos is at practically no risk of burn-in, so don't worry about this if you're primarily using an OLED for gaming. Even the occasional bit of desktop app usage is fine, it's more 8 hours a day of productivity work that may lead to burn-in, and this is something we'll be exploring on the channel soon. As for burn-in warranty, Dell are offering a 3-year warranty that covers burn-in as clearly stated on their website. This gives you some peace of mind that you should be able to use this display normally and not have to worry about burn-in, and if you do experience burn-in, you'll be able to file a warranty claim. With that said, we'd still recommend trying to minimize burn-in during usage, like minimizing the taskbar, setting the display to turn off after a short period of inactivity, and reducing static app usage. This should help extend the life of your monitor beyond the three-year warranty period. In terms of response time performance, it's no surprise to see this QD OLED panel offering lightning fast speeds, similar to other QD OLEDs we've tested. At its maximum 360Hz refresh rate, we're seeing a 0.3 millisecond average response, which is extremely fast, and that leads to excellent motion clarity. With no noticeable inverse ghosting, this Dell model is on par with other OLEDs for speed and superior to any LCD when comparing at the same refresh rate. However, when factoring in the new 360Hz refresh, the highest we've seen from an OLED, peak motion clarity is the best we've ever gotten from this display technology, and it's in the ballpark of 500Hz LCDs. The best part of how OLEDs function is that performance is basically identical at all refresh rates. This means whether we're testing at 360Hz, 240Hz, 120Hz, or 60Hz, we're still seeing about a 0.3 millisecond response time average. LCDs typically get slower as the refresh rate decreases, but this isn't the case here. So the AW2725TF offers a single overdrive mode experience, without any overdrive settings of course, as they aren't required for an OLED. This is great news for competitive gamers that may not always be able to hit 360 FPS. Gaming at a lower FPS brings about the same response times, though reduced motion clarity due to sample and hold motion blur. There is effectively no difference in response time performance between this QD OLED and other OLED monitors. As this Alienware model has a high 360Hz refresh rate, you can ensure when buying this display that its motion clarity is excellent, though similar to the MSI model we looked at previously. 
Where the big difference lies is between OLED and LCD. This Dell monitor is much faster than the fastest LCD I've tested, which is a big win for OLED, and it only gets better when looking at average performance. While LCDs do get a bit slower at lower refresh rates, OLEDs don't, so the gap between OLED and LCD grows. If you want a highly consistent gaming experience from your monitor, there's no better choice than an OLED. It's also good to confirm excellent cumulative deviation results, though no different from most other OLEDs. As expected, this really is the same technology that delivers the same response time performance as other QD OLEDs. To give you an idea of just how clear this monitor looks in practice, let's take a look at the Blurbusters UFO test. These images were captured on the MSI 271QRX, but also apply to the AW2725DF, as both monitors have identical motion clarity. While 240Hz OLEDs are already quite good in terms of motion performance, 360Hz is a step above in clarity. It really looks excellent and pushes OLED to new heights. However, when running at lower refresh rates, you can expect similar clarity to previous OLEDs, so there is still some blur at 120Hz and especially 60Hz. The fact this monitor can go up to 360Hz is only a benefit above 240Hz, the previous maximum for OLED tech. It doesn't make 60Hz faster than other OLEDs. If we put this result next to results from other monitors, the AW2725DF is roughly on par with 500Hz or 540Hz LCDs in motion clarity, though it trades blows and the 540Hz image can be clearer at times. However, the fast response times of OLED give this monitor a clear advantage up against 360Hz LCDs like the PG27AQN, giving us the best motion clarity available at a 1440p resolution, the previous best being the PG27AQN. That's without backlight strobing though, when we introduce strobing to the LCD comparisons, ULMB2 and DIAC Plus for example, typically an LCD will have better clarity. Again, it depends on where you look. I think the PG248QP image at 540Hz is noticeably better and in the lead, but edge clarity and strobe crosstalk is better from the AW2725DF QD OLED with better text clarity on the 360Hz strobed LCDs. What's also important to remember is the Alienware model can achieve this clarity while HDR and Adaptive Sync are enabled, whereas the best LCD strobing implementations only operate at fixed refresh rates without HDR. I also think the 360Hz OLED image holds up really well compared to 540Hz TN LCD when we double the speed of the UFO. Strobing assists the LCD quite a bit here to improve motion clarity, but when looking at non-strobed performance, there is no doubting this OLED is offering an excellent experience. Input latency is very good, offering around a 0.3 millisecond processing delay in both the SDR and HDR modes. Combined with fast response times and a super high refresh rate, this OLED feels exceptionally snappy to use, and is well suited to competitive multiplayer titles. It's one of the lowest input latency monitors I've tested when factoring in processing delay, refresh delay, and response times, and it definitely feels just unbelievably quick to use. 540Hz LCDs do have lower refresh lag, which may be an advantage in some competitive settings, but as far as 1440p monitors go, it doesn't get better than this. Power consumption is interesting because the Dell monitor actually came in consuming about 6 watts less than the MSI model at the same 200 nits of full screen brightness. This is still less efficient than competing 1440p W OLEDs though, which benefit from a white subpixel. The AOC AG276QZD uses 35% less power in this setting. The best LCDs for efficiency will use less than half the power. Now, this display doesn't always use 70 watts. For example, opening Steam and showing the homepage of this store uses about 26 watts as it's a much lower APL image, but that's still not quite as efficient as the best monitors. So yes, QD OLEDs are power hungry. All OLEDs that we've tested so far offer a very similar color space. In the case of the AW2725DF, we're looking at 99.4% DCI-P3 coverage, as well as 97.9% .9 Adobe RGB coverage, strong results for viewing HDR content or working in those color spaces. In total, I saw 80.5% coverage of Rec 2020, which as you can see from the chart is basically the same as other QD OLEDs that I've tested, and a higher color gamut than competing W OLEDs, such as the PG27 AQDM from ASUS. Out of the box factory calibration is pretty good when looking at grayscale, the CCT average is acceptable, and the Delta E average is reasonable. Gamma isn't 100% accurate, but still pretty good. However, like with a lot of gaming monitors, the SDR mode does not use an sRGB or Rec. 709 gamut clamp by default, so a lot of content will be oversaturated, as it gets expanded up to fill the very wide gamut of this monitor. Some people like this effect, 
although it's not especially accurate and can cause issues with skin tones in YouTube videos, for example. Compared to other monitors, Grayscale Performance is in the middle of the chart, though towards the better part given accuracy falls away for monitors below the AW2725DF. When looking at Color Checker, these results are highly influenced by the wider than sRGB color gamut that is being used, and what we're seeing is very similar to other QD OLEDs. Calibration can be significantly improved through Alienware's outstanding sRGB mode. While Dell do lock some settings in this mode, you can't change white balance for example, my unit had exceptional accuracy from the factory which makes this a non-issue. With that said, I'd still have liked to see a fully unlocked mode just in case other units don't ship quite as well calibrated. The results seen in this sRGB mode are the most accurate I've ever tested from a gaming monitor. This mode is on par with a full software calibration and cannot be improved further. The gamut clamping is excellent and overall Delta E performance is in the 1.0 range, which is elite. This delivers the best SDR experience you can get right now. Compared to other monitors, you can see where the AW2725DF stands. While the MSI equivalent also ships with an excellent sRGB mode, the Dell model is a step better in both grayscale and color checker. A chart topping result here from Dell and like I said, the best results I've seen testing over 150 monitors. Maximum brightness in the SDR mode came in at 230 nits after calibration, which is slightly lower than other QD OLED monitors. However, before calibration, I saw around 240 nits in line with what I expected. This is similar to some competing W OLED monitors, or even better in some cases, like when comparing it to the LG 27GR95QE. The Dell model does not use an automatic brightness limiter in the SDR mode, so brightness is always capped to around 230 nits. However, what's interesting about the AW2725DF and also the AW3225QF is that Dell, in most display modes, appears to be permanently enabling the logo detection OLED care feature we've seen on other monitors. On the MSI model, when the setting is enabled, typical brightness is reduced by 25 to 30 nits in most circumstances. So for example, if you set it to 200 nits in a full screen white image, you'd see more like 170 nits in real world application windows, like a web page with a white background in Chrome. MSI allows you to disable this feature, providing 200 nits in our example, or up to 250 nits all of the time, even in real world apps. On the Dell model, you can't disable logo detection, meaning in a lot of configurations, real world max brightness drops from 230 nits to about 200 nits. This behavior was first pointed out in a video by Techless, so shout out to their channel, but I've also seen the exact same thing with the 32 inch 4K model. There is a workaround for this, which is to use the creator mode, aka the sRGB mode, which appears to disable this likely logo detection related brightness drop and gives you around 230 nits all of the time. But it's still not an ideal situation because if you want to use the other modes, you'll be stuck with lower real world brightness. Dell should probably offer more adjustability to the OLED care features like we see from MSI. Minimum brightness is good at just 18 nits, very sufficient for using the display at night. I was very impressed with the wide viewing angles of this panel, they are very wide which makes it easy to view the display even at quite extreme angles, it really looks excellent. Uniformity was also very good with my unit, nice and uniform viewing full white and no dirty screen effect viewing dark greys. The Dell AW2725DF is an excellent HDR display, this is due to OLED technology's inherent hardware qualities that are tailor made for displaying HDR content. The key feature here is that each individual pixel is self-lit, meaning at a pixel level the display can turn on or off to accurately display everything from dark shadows to bright highlights. When the display needs to show pure black, it can fully switch off, giving us the trademark rich zero-level blacks and deep shadows that OLED is known for. This is in contrast to most HDR-capable LCD panels, which are not fully controllable at the pixel level. LCDs require a backlight, and for HDR displays this typically means the use of full array local dimming, a technology that splits the backlight into zones. Whereas OLED can turn off each pixel individually, LCDs with local dimming can only turn off certain zones, encompassing hundreds or even thousands of pixels. This can still be effective for HDR content and look great, but it has some fundamental flaws in difficult circumstances. For example, when showing a bright and dark element close together, an OLED can control each pixel as needed with a clean, accurate distinction between bright and dark. LCDs with local dimming need to masterfully control the zones to achieve the necessary distinction between bright and dark, and when the element is too small or not in the optimal position, the bright element can spill into the dark area within the backlight zone, creating ugly blooming artifacts. OLED therefore has the edge when it comes to displaying clean HDR content with minimal blooming or haloing. 
In some scenes, this will be the difference between raised blacks and deep blacks, such as for starfields and Christmas light. At other times, OLED can have a brightness advantage for small bright objects within a dark scene. Subtitles will look cleaner on an OLED with reduced blooming, and generally OLEDs produce richer shadows thanks to its inherently higher contrast ratio. Aside from brightness and shadow detail, OLEDs also have other advantages for HDR. As there are no backlight zones, OLEDs are faster to transition between bright and dark with no visible zone transitions. OLEDs are much less likely to suffer from backlight flickering, although light PWM behavior, especially when using a variable refresh rate, is common. And OLEDs like this one do not increase input latency in its HDR mode, as they don't need to run a backlight zone algorithm. The AW2725DF is well configured for HDR out of the box, with graceful switching between the SDR and HDR modes even if you choose to use the sRGB mode for SDR. While it does lack Dolby Vision, disappointing for those wanting to hook up external media players and access Dolby Vision content, it also means there's no Dolby Vision related configuration issues caused by Windows 11, like we saw with the larger AW3225QF. The best mode for HDR gaming is the Peak 1000 mode because it allows the monitor to push up to its maximum brightness capabilities of 1000 nits and you get the same performance whether you have an AMD or Nvidia GPU. Good to see given the early issues with the AW3423DWF in the past. EOTF tracking in the Peak 1000 mode at a 10% window size is pretty good, certainly no glaring issues here. Roll-off occurs a little too early, and brightness is very slightly raised when viewing dark tracking, but neither of these things has a significant impact on the visual experience. Accuracy improves when viewing EOTF tracking at a 2% window size. Here it's basically perfect, except for, again, slightly raised dark tracking. I was also impressed with saturation sweep accuracy, which is very good, especially when the color gamut of the content is within the gamut of the monitor so it can be displayed properly. Compared to other monitors, HDR color match accuracy is great, outperforming the MSI 271QRX, though not quite reaching the level of the PG32 UCDM from ASUS. Grayscale accuracy is really good too, delivering a similar experience to the AW3225QF and also the MSI 271QRX. Also important to discuss is color volume, which is a measurement that assesses both total color space coverage and luminance for each color. This is where QD OLED panels have quite a substantial advantage over W OLEDs because fully saturated color brightness, e.g. 100% green brightness, is higher on QD OLED than W OLED. This leads to the AW2725DF having great Rec 2020 color volume of 74%, compared to just 45% for the W OLED PG34WCDM, which offers similar results to other W OLEDs. Panel brightness is effectively identical in the HDR mode to other QD OLEDs we've tested previously. Full screen HDR brightness reaches 248 nits, and it's interesting that HDR brightness here is slightly higher than in the SDR mode. At a 10% window size, we see 450 nits, which is standard for QD OLED, though on the low side compared to most other HDR displays, and this is one area Samsung display need to improve with future panels. 2% window brightness hits 991 nits, which is as expected and similar to other OLEDs, even if it doesn't quite reach 1000 nits. Here's the full brightness versus window size chart, and really I don't think there are any surprises here. We see identical results to the 271QRX, and it seems all QD OLEDs have the same behavior. The main difference is to W OLEDs like the PG27AQDM. This W OLED can't get quite as bright for the very smallest elements, but does have an advantage in the 10 to 25% window size range. For larger window sizes, the 27 inch QD OLED panel then retakes the lead. Of course, I'm referring here to white brightness. Color brightness is still superior on QD OLED as it has a much higher color volume. For real world brightness, let's start with a mid APL video test where the AW2725DF is a little behind other models, offering 316 nits. This is also true for our low APL test, where I saw just 737 nits, around 100 to 200 nits behind other QD OLED models. However, the AW2725DF has aggressive auto dimming, which makes this hard to test accurately. Then we have a test where a bright element is right next to the edge of a letterboxed 21x9 video frame, where again the Alienware model is a little down on brightness compared to the MSI model, but not all that different to other QD OLEDs. In our low APL gaming test, I was surprised to see the AW2725DF only producing around 900 nits of brightness, given most other QD OLEDs were capable of around 1000 nits here. Visually, this isn't a huge difference, it was just interesting to see. For mid APL gaming, I got around 450 nits, which is what I saw in synthetic tests. Then for high APL gaming, really OLEDs are not the best, as the AW2725DF was only good for about 243 nits of brightness. 
Final section of this review is the new Hub Essentials Checklist 2.0. In this first part, we're assessing how accurate Dell's spec sheet is and also providing some additional information ourselves. In general, Dell do a good job of advertising this monitor, however, labeling the HDMI ports as 2.1 instead of 2.0 could be misleading to some buyers. Dell claim factory calibration, and that appears true in the sRGB mode. Obviously, this monitor is capable of true HDR, and brightness specs are close to advertised, depending on if I'm testing calibrated or factory. The second section is our feature support matrix. It's no surprise to see an OLED performing well in the motion and contrast areas with lots of green ticks. I gave Dell a borderline result for brightness, as in some modes you can't reach 250 nits, as well as flickering because I did see some very minor OLED PWM flick in one game I tested that wasn't present on the MSI variant. Dell also missed a few key features such as USB-C input and power delivery, a KVM switch, and the ability to run the monitor at 360Hz over HDMI. However, it was good to see some areas that Dell gets right. For example, the sRGB mode has excellent calibration, SDR-HDR switching works really well, the monitor is quiet despite having active cooling, and input latency is very low. Dell are also continuing to provide a three-year burn warranty, which has pushed a lot of the industry to adopt similar warranties for their OLED monitors. I've now tested two 27-inch 1440p 360Hz QD OLED gaming monitors, and in many respects, I'm just as impressed with the Dell Alienware AW2725DF as I was with the MSI MPG271QRX. This is an excellent 1440p gaming monitor. It's fast, it has great HDR performance, it's well calibrated, and it works nicely with no serious annoyances. One of the biggest reasons to buy the AW2725DF is to access its elite motion clarity. At 360Hz, this is the fastest OLED we've ever tested, and in motion it offers a similar level of clarity to 500Hz LCDs. While it isn't quite as clear as the best strobed LCDs at super high refresh rates, this latest wave of 360Hz QD OLEDs offer the ultimate experience for competitive gamers that want speed but don't want to sacrifice adaptive sync viewing angles or resolution. Often what we see from super fast monitors is that to access that speed you have to sacrifice something else. For example, if you want the motion clarity of the ASUS PG248QP at 540Hz, you have to put up with the poor viewing angles of a TN panel, its small size, its low 1080p resolution, and the limitations of strobing. If you want the fastest 1440p LCD, you're limited at the moment to just 360Hz, which offers worse motion clarity than this Alienware without strobing. Plus, when you turn on strobing, it's not always better and has the same old limitations. Either way you go with an LCD, you certainly won't be getting the AW2725DF's combination of motion clarity and HDR simultaneously. This monitor also offers something for buyers that just want a visually stunning 1440p gaming display. You don't have to utilize the 360Hz refresh rate to benefit from deep blacks, per pixel local dimming, and a fantastic HDR presentation with up to a thousand nits of peak brightness. Alienware have done an excellent job of calibration too, with the best sRGB mode I've ever tested, and great calibration in the HDR mode as well. Not every aspect of this monitor is perfect though, OLED brings with it the risk of permanent burn-in, so it isn't that well suited to lots of productivity work or static app usage. The subpixel structure at this pixel density isn't quite as clear for text as traditional LCDs, though it is a step above W OLEDs. The panel composition and coding isn't the best for use in brighter environments, and there's a few features Dell haven't included like a KVM switch, proper HDMI 2.1, or good USB-C functionality. The big question mark with this monitor is whether you should purchase the Dell variant or the MSI variant. When purely talking about features and performance, I don't think there is a clear winner. The MSI model has a few additional features and has slightly higher brightness. The Dell model is better calibrated, has a nicer design in my opinion, and nails HDR-SDR switching. The vast majority of performance characteristics are identical or near identical between the two, as they both use the same QD OLED panel. What is going to be the deciding factor for most people is the price. In the US, the MSI model is $100 cheaper at $800 US versus $900 US for the Alienware. While I don't think the Dell model is poorly priced at all, it's quite fair compared to previous W OLED monitors, the MSI variant is just as good and $100 cheaper. So that's a winner in my eyes. Outside the United States, the situation is completely reversed. The Alienware model offers excellent value in most other countries, especially in Europe and Australia, where the MSI model is pretty outrageous. Here the 271QRX is priced at $1800 Aussie, while the AW2725DF is priced at just $1360. 
there is simply no way I'd ever pay $440 redos more on the MSI model when it's virtually the same. At $800 US, the MSI model should be between $1,300 and $1,400 locally, which would be very competitive with Dell. Instead, they've jacked up the price massively, so I would go with the Alienware variant every single time. In Europe, the Alienware model is around €100 Euros cheaper than the 271 QRX. Again, that makes the AW2725DF the obvious buy. I also think the Alienware model is more reasonably priced compared to previous 1440p 240Hz W OLED models, which are around the €700 Euro mark at their cheapest. You're still looking at a 30% premium to get 360Hz QD OLED instead of 240Hz W OLED, so you'll have to decide whether the higher refresh rate, better text clarity, higher brightness in some situations, and glossy coating are worth it. I don't think that premium is outrageous, as I do believe these newer QD OLEDs are clearly better, but at that price difference, I could go either way. Anyway, that's it for this review of the Alienware 360Hz QD OLED Gaming Monitor. If you're appreciating all our coverage of these QD OLED monitors, and if it's helping you decide what monitor to buy, then please do consider subscribing to our channel for more content, if you're interested in monitors, that is. Like the video, and also consider supporting us directly via our Patreon or Floatplane accounts. We really appreciate everyone who signs up, links in the description below. And when you do, you gain access to some cool benefits, like our Discord community, which is a great place to chat about monitors. We also have monthly live streams, BTS content, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.